Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah anyhow. Never ever let your problems get you down. When your problems come your way, lift your hands up high and say, Hallelujah anyhow. Praise the Lord. I greet you in Jesus Christ's name. It's a blessing to be here once again, to be able to bring the word of the living God. Praise God. My name is Pastor David Brian Gray, and we are honored of the Lord to be with you. If you get an opportunity, please share uh, this uh, message. Please share this video. Praise God. And um, I'm certain that it will bless your life, not because of me, but because Jesus Christ is on the throne because we came to talk about the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. And so I greet you on this Lord's day. Praise God. One more uh, chance God has given us, given you, given me, given us to be able to break bread on uh, today. And so we honor the Lord for each and every one of you. Is that my brother on there? Praise God. I think that's him. He got sunglasses on. I can't tell, but amen. That's my brother. Praise in the Lord. Praise the Lord. My brother from another mother. Praise God. Um, and I think he's in, I don't know where he's at. Probably he probably in China by now. I don't know. China, Australia, uh, uh, brother. He, he based out of California. Then he got another office down in Louisiana and uh, one over in Texas. And I just, I, my God. And Hallelujah. Good to see you, my brother. Praise God. We honor the Lord and we're so excited for what God is doing. Amen. God is doing great things in people's lives all over. Is that my other brother there watching? Pastor Talbert, Dr. Talbert, God bless you in Michigan. Got folk in Cal. Oh, he's in Cal. That's where Bishop Benjamin is at. He's in California. We got Dr. Talbert in Michigan. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm excited today of what the Lord is doing. Only God could do this. Amen. Only God can bring this all about. And so we're just excited for him. I ask you, if you will, if you want to, if you would share this, praise God. And let's get this message out in the name of the Lord. So many of my pastor friends, I'm so excited for what God is doing in their lives, how God is blessing them blessing their ministries and expanding their coast and their territory. Praise God. That's what we want. We got, want God to extend our coast and our territory. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And ain't nobody mad but the devil. Praise God. And if anybody else is mad, they got the devil. Praise God. But I'm excited for my brothers and sisters in the Lord and what God is doing in their lives, blessing their families, increasing their ministries, and just prospering them, blessing their people. Praise God. This is the day. This is the time. We ain't got time to be fighting one another. Uh-uh. We got a devil we got to fight. We got a devil we got to cast out. Praise God. We got to get people saved. Praise God. We got to tell them the message that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he's on the throne. We got to let people know everywhere, everywhere. We got to let people know that Jesus Christ lives. Praise God. And with only with him. Praise God. I know people are waiting. They can't wait till the 20th. A new president coming in, an old president leaving. But I want you to know something. The, my Bible says, unless the Lord keep the city, they that watch are watching in vain. Unless the Lord uh, help you with the house. Praise God. There's no sense in you trying to keep it secure. Praise God. You need God in the mix. You need God in, in the life. And just because we got a new president, that don't mean things are going to get all so much better and whatever else. You still going to have problems. Hallelujah. Jesus said in this life, you will have tribulation, but in him, you will have peace. All right. I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time and whatever else. I'm going to go right on into the word of the living God. Uh, I was reading yesterday on my devotion and I was reading from Matthew and Jesus, uh, of course, everything that Christ says is apropos and it's it's current. Praise God. I don't care if the Bible was written 
years and years and years ago, I want you to know the message of the Word of God is current for anything and everything that you and I go through with. And so Jesus, I believe here in this text, and even throughout the whole Bible, but anyway, uh, he speaks to what you and I are going through today. Here we are in America, uh, the stuff that take place took place in Washington, the stuff that's gone place uh, took place all over the, the past year, uh, things that are going to go on this year. And just because last year is gone and this is a new year, that don't mean that, praise God, we still not we won't have any problems or situations. God bless you, Sister uh, uh, Century. Praise God in Florida. Praise God. God bless you tuning in. But Jesus has a word uh, for us today. And there is a word from the Lord. All right. If you will, open up your Bibles. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. Very familiar passage of Scripture. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34. Matthew chapter uh, 6, verse 25 through 34. You'll hear these words. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air. Now, isn't it something Jesus is talking to uh, the crowd? Because he's this is part of the Sermon on the Mount. Verse chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7 are uh, uh, from the Sermon on the Mount. When Christ sat on the Mount and the, and the people were there, he's had the people to sit down and he began to teach them and talk to them. Praise God. And so... My point is this, Jesus is talking to people, but he gives them some natural examples uh, of creatures that God has made. God has made all creatures. All are God's creatures, but all are not God's children. Let me make that point right then and here, right here and there. All are God's creatures, but all are not God's children. Amen. Amen. So. But he uses other creatures to try to teach his creature that is made in his own likeness and in his own image a lesson. So notice what he says. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Yes, because I'm made in the image and in the likeness of God and his son, Jesus, died on the cross, rose from the dead for me, for you, for all mankind. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic unto his stature? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. So first he gives us the birds, then he gives us the flowers. Now he gives us one that the uh, Jewish people can identify with. You and I, uh, if you're born again, can identify with Solomon. Solomon, who had great wisdom, who, uh, who, who um, had like 300, 400, no, 800, excuse me. He had 800 Proverbs and over 1,005 songs that he had composed. Praise God. Hallelujah. But anyway, but, and he had riches. God said, because you asked of wisdom, Solomon, I'm going to get, I'm going to make it where there's no man before you born like you, no man after you born like you. And he had, and then God through riches, on top of that, praise God. So notice what God says. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all of these. But seek ye first. 
I want that to echo in your ears. I want that to reverberate in your soul. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I want to talk to you today from the subject, don't get caught in the web. Don't get caught in the web. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your people that are on and that are watching and will watch. Lord, I pray that you would bless them and touch them. I pray that this message would impact and empower them. Lord God, not only to face what they're going through with, but to go throughout this year and to guide them and direct them. We thank you for the word of the living God. Lord, I ask you to hide me behind the cross. No part of flesh taking your glory. I bless you and praise you in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And God's people said, amen. All right. So don't get caught in the web. I was thinking about this and, and I, I was even going to uh, probably even, I was going to even title this, uh, Can't Add an Inch. Because Jesus said, how can you take thought uh, by adding one inch? Praise God. Uh, but when I, when I really was really thinking about this, I thought about the fact of, have you ever seen a spider's web? And in that spider's web, that, 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 that spider weaves the web as that, that is his, his home. But it's also his trap to catch his prey, her prey, his prey, her prey, all right? To catch its prey, the spider's prey. I've seen where flies flying around and then they fly into that web and they get entangled because it has certain types of stickiness to them. That, that, that fly that's eaten many times can be bigger than the spider, yet because of the stickiness of that web, and because that fly doesn't recognize that it can get trapped, it gets entangled and snared up in that web. And then here comes Mr. Mrs. Spider, Spider, Miss Spider, Mr. Spider, uh, who sat down beside her. Uh, but anyway, the, the spider goes up to that fly and bites it, shoots in its poison or kills it, whatever else. And it's got its food. And then it weaves some kind of cocoon thing around it. I, you know, and I, I don't know. all. But anyway, it got caught up in the web. Some of you listen to me today. Jesus is saying, don't get caught up in the web. The web, the web. Praise God. He says here to you and I, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Notice the text, what he said there in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 through 34. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. See, we're living in a day where everybody is so caught up in what's going on. I understand that what the, what happened last week in, in Washington and what's going to happen on later on this week and, and, and the, the COVID thing and, and all this kind of stuff like that. And, the, and it, do you get a stimulus check and all of this kind of stuff like that and, 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 and how people are losing their job. And, and listen, the Bible says don't get caught up in this world. I want to send a shout out to Sister Elaine Bakes. God bless you. So Jesus says... In other words, what Jesus is teaching on, he's saying, stop worrying. Many of you are caught up in worrying and fretting and anxious for the day. Let me, let me, let me, let me talk to you for a minute. First of all, if you notice, Jesus said, or God, Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. According to Britannica, the Hebrew word for uh, kingdom of God is Malkuth which means refers not to the geographical area or realm, nor to people inhabiting the realm, but rather to the activity of the king himself. His exercise of sovereign power, in English by expression, such as his kingship, 
his rule or his sovereignty. Notice what Jesus said. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. When we talk about the kingdom, we're talking about the realm. We're talking about the rule. We're talking about the righteousness of God. You and I, me and you, if we are born again, if we know Christ is our personal Lord and Savior, you must understand that this earth is no longer your home. This is not your home. I'm just passing through. That's what the that's what the old seniors used to say. Praise God. Hallelujah. They didn't have all that biblical knowledge and they didn't have uh, uh, all of this and that. But they knew I'm just passing through. This ain't my home. But the but the modern believer today, we get so caught up in the things of the world and Jesus's message from yesterday. Praise God speaks to us today. And will speak to us, the Lord say the same, tomorrow. The kingdom of God, the reign of God, where God is in complete and total control. The rule that everything must go by the edicts of the king. Come on, y'all. Of righteousness, being in right standing. That's why Jesus Christ came. He came to give us his righteousness for our righteousness, which according to uh, uh, the Bible is filthy rags. I don't care what you do. I don't care how much you do. Praise God to help people or, or do whatever else. Our righteousness is filthy rags. And when it was talking about rags, hello, I don't mean to offend nobody, but it wasn't talking about the rag you use to clean a house. It was talking about some other kind of rag. Amen. Oh, I don't want to. But anyway, let me go into this text here. The kingdom of God is the spiritual realm over which God reigns as king or uh, the fulfillment of on earth of God's will. What did Jesus pray in the model prayer? He prayed, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. How? As it is in heaven. That's what Christ prayed, and that was a model of prayer. Praise God. That was not the Lord's prayer. That was a model of prayer to get you and I into the mode of how we ought to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, who do you, who do you acknowledge? You acknowledge the King of all kings, our Father, which art in heaven, where he's at. He's in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. In other words, I magnify and I glorify your name. Hallowed be thy name. His name is worthy to be praised. His name is a strong tower where the righteous run in and are safe. His name, his name. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. His name, Jesus is Christ's name, cast out demons. Hallelujah. At the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Well, you said the name of God. Well, yes, Jehovah Jireh, uh, our provider, Jehovah Nisa, Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee, Jehovah uh, 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 El Shaddai, all those names and titles, those redemptive names, God took them and put them in the name of Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things in earth and things under the earth, and every tongue shall confess. So we're talking here today about not getting caught up in the web. Don't get caught in the web. Don't 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 get caught in the web. Come on, y'all. Help me teach this thing today. Come on, pray for me. Hallelujah. We're talking about not getting caught up in the web. And here we are in the book of Matthew. Matthew, praise God, comes in the division of the Bible known as the New Testament. The book of Matthew, praise God, is the first book in the New Testament. You have to understand something. That the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi, between Malachi and Matthew are 400 years, what we call the silent years. We call them the intertestament period, uh, where, where nothing went up, in a sense, and nothing came down. There was, there was a, a, a huge division as God was waiting, praise God, for things to line up for the time for Christ to come. Malachi 
uh, 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 the book Malachi and the, the prophet Malachi uh, was there and he died and then 400 years and now Matthew comes on the scene, praise God, with a little, uh, 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 in a sense, peasant girl who's, who's betrothed to this man by the name of Joseph. Hallelujah. Come to find out she been uh, she 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 came up pregnant. Uh oh uh oh uh oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That that was in her in her womb. Hallelujah. Was the holy child of God. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit overshadowed her. Hallelujah. And Jesus the Christ was born. Oh, ha And you shall call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins. So Matthew records the life of Christ on the earth. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John record the life of Christ on the earth. Matthew looks at Christ as the ideal king. This is the king talking. When we read Matthew, all throughout Matthew, and, and, and depending on the type of Bible you have, many times the words of Christ are in red. The words of Christ are in red. Hallelujah. Why? Because this is the king talking, y'all. This is the king. So the biblical writers who put the word of God together. Remember, the word of God is God breathed. God breathed upon holy men of God. And they wrote as the Holy Spirit uh, uh, so uh, intricately uh, uh, governed them and 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 encouraged them to write. They wrote from their own background, and some of them met God, uh, Christ. Some of them heard it, uh, uh, but they all, you know, they met the Lord and, and and such. And so here, Matthew records the words of the King. So when we're reading here, if you and I, praise God. Excuse me. If you and I were non-citizens of America and we were trying to come to America to 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 become citizens of America, we would we are we are supposed to follow the rules. Come on, y'all. The, 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 the rules of the land. Well, as in the natural, also in the spiritual. Here is the king before the people giving them his uh, his words. On how the kingdom is to operate in your life, in this world. Hallelujah. And so he says here in the text, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. Matthew, uh, praise God. When you read Matthew, and if you get a chance later on, read Matthew chapter 5. Read Matthew chapter 6. Read Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 5 Gives us the be attitudes. How we ought to be as far as our attitude. Come on, y'all. Matthew chapter 6 gives us the model of prayer and practical. I like that. Practical advice for everyday living. That's what I love about God. God doesn't give us some rules way up here and then say, all right, you follow them rules and I'm going to sit back and see if you can do it. No. God says, let me give you some, some, some basic rules. And through the power of my spirit, I'm going to help you follow them. Ah! Matthew chapter 7 includes the golden rule. What is, what is the golden rule? Matthew chapter 7 verse 12 says, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. That's the golden rule, y'all. The golden rule. So, so my message today don't get caught in the web. Don't get caught. Don't get caught. Don't get caught in the web. If you're in the room with somebody else, just look at them and tell them, don't get caught in the web. Don't get caught. Don't get caught. Now, 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 uh, as we're, uh, as we bring this out and hopefully you still got your Bibles open. What did, you didn't close up your Bible, did you? No, no, don't do it. Don't close up your Bible. Open up that Bible. Praise God. Put your ribbon in Matthew chapter six. But turn with me to 1 John chapter 2. Come on, y'all. Help me teach this thing today. 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Let's look at it. 1 John chapter 2. I got to turn on some heat here. My God. 1 John chapter 2. Look at what it says. Hallelujah. 
plan to be in my office pretty soon, y'all. I plan to be in there. First John. Come on, y'all. First John chapter 2. Come on, Sister Susan. Come on. First John chapter 2. Look at verse 15. Look at what it says. It says, love not the world, neither the things. And we're in verse 15. I'm sorry. My fault. First John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. Help me to slow down. I want to preach it all to you. <laughs> but anyway, it says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So let's look at this real quick. Let's look at this. This is number two, number one of two scriptures that I want you to, uh, that, that we need to exegete because we need to understand what the text is saying. What Matthew, what Jesus is saying to us in Matthew chapter six. John here records, uh, praise God, love not the world. Now John should know what he's talking about. He was one of the disciples, praise God, at the same time when Christ was walking the earth. You see, Jesus had 12 main disciples. And John was one of them. He was in the inner circle of that group. You remember the group? Jesus had 12 disciples, but God, but Jesus had three close, close uh, disciples. Praise God. John, James, and Peter. Or I should say Peter, James, and John. Praise God. But anyway, John here should understand what Matthew was talking about because he says in chapter 2 verse 15 through 17 he says love not the world well why should I love the world John let me let's pretend John's right here with me and he's talking with me and we're 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 going back and forth John you say love not the world what's wrong with me loving the world because when you love the world Mr. Gray you love the God who made this world ah! Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Reverend Gray. Let me step in. Hold on, Reverend Gray. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You saying now nah, I need to, I, I shouldn't love God. And you already told us in Matthew chapter 6 that the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. No, look at him. He wrong. No, you have to understand something. When John is talking about the world here, he's talking about the system. How things how things operate in this world. Notice he lets us know and gives us examples for all that is in the world in verse 16. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's not of the Father. See, John is talking about a different God than what Jesus is talking about. Jesus is talking about the God, the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, the master and ruler. He's talking about his Father. Who, if you are born again and you know Christ is your personal Lord and Savior, he's your father as well. But John here is talking about a different God. He's talking about the God of this world or the devil. That's who he's talking about. And he says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Why? Because the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them. The God of this world has set up the system of this world of lust, of greed, of pride. Oh, you don't hear me today. Ah! So I came back to talk to you today to tell you, hallelujah, don't get caught in the web. That's my message today. That's my text today. Or I should say that's my title today. Love, not the world. Hallelujah. You see, this world is caught up in fear, greed, lust, praise God, things that titillate and murder and strife. Keeping up with the Joneses. I ain't never met the Joneses, but keeping up with the Joneses. Huh? The sis that's how this system works. That's how this world operates. Through the lust and through the lust of the eyes. I got to have it. I got to have it. I got to have me some Timberland boots. I got to have me that Nine West dress. I got to have me a St. John dress, a Nine West shoes. I got to have Gucci. I got to have a Louis Vuitton. Oh, I got to have it. Oh, I got to have a fur coat. Oh, I got to have a big diamond ring. Oh, I got to have jewelry hanging from my neck. Oh, I got to have a gold. What is that? Is that a Movado watch? Oh, I got to have it. I got to have it. Oh, green. Greed, 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 greed. Some of you listen to me today, you bought a brand new car. And before you even drove it off the lot, you was thinking, I should have bought that car. Why didn't I get that? Oh, mm. 
Huh? You look across the street, you see how the Joneses or the Smiths are living, and you say, oh, oh, let, oh they got a new car. I got to go get me a new car. Oh, they got a new, uh, uh, they got a Winnebago. I got to go get me a, a motor home. Oh, they got a boat. I got to go get me a boat. Huh? The, we, the world system, the Bible tells us not to get caught up in that. Don't be entangled in the web. I want to send a shout out to England, Sister Diana Gomes. Good to see you. God bless you. All right. So notice what he says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Hallelujah. If any man love the world, now look at what he says. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why is not the love of the Father in you if you love the world? Because you cannot serve two masters. You can't love God, the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, and still be attached and hold it on to this world. Some of you listen to me today. That's why you got so many problems. That's why you got so many worries and you can't sleep at night and you can't make it. And look here, you open up the refrigerator and oh, it's like, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm like the little woman that lived in a shoe, had so many children. I don't know what to do. And oh, I'm not going to make it. And oh, didn't you say that two years ago you wasn't going to make it? Didn't you say that three years ago you didn't make it and yet you're still here? Come on, y'all. Get off that mess. Hallelujah. God is seeing you through. What did Jesus say? He says, love not the world. What did Jesus say? He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. What do we mean by righteousness? We mean to be in right standing with God. What do I mean? Now, all of us have a phone bill. I got a phone bill. You got a phone bill. We all have a phone bill. Now, as long as my bill is paid, I'm in right standing, come on y'all, with the phone company. But if I let my, my phone bill lapse, if I don't pay my bill, all right, they suddenly can't help me. They suddenly, come on y'all, why? Because I'm, I'm, I'm out of standing with them. You follow me? And the only way I'll be back in good standing with the phone company is when I pay my bill. Well, as in the natural, also in the spiritual. When Jesus came up out of the water, God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Well, when Christ comes into your life, come on, y'all. Hallelujah. He washes your sins away. But you and I, praise God, the Bible lets us know clearly, hallelujah, that we are to come to God and, for, and confess our sins. For if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So when you and I sin and don't act like you, you, oh, no, I, I, I am God's angel. Don't you see this halo around my head? Don't you see these feathers on the end of my, 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 on, on my back? I am God's angel. Baby, let me tell you something. Hello? You and I might have sinned just before we got on today. You and hello, thinking the wrong thoughts or what? And can, can I tell you something? We're talking what, about one of the biggest sins right here today. According to Jesus, praise God, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34, he's talking about worry. Worry is one of the biggest sins that believers commit every day, all the time. Why? Because we don't trust God. The Bible says one of the greatest uh, uh, two verses in the Bible, uh, Proverbs chapter six, uh, uh, Proverbs chapter three, verse five and six. Uh, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. I, I don't understand why the economy is like this. I don't understand why all of these. Uh, I got the vaccination, but now uh, the COVID has turned to another strain. And oh, I, I don't understand why. Uh, the, listen here. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Some of you listen to me today. The reason why you're worried and you're so caught up, praise God, is one, you watch too much of the news. Turn the news off. 
Stop getting into the news so much. Did you hear what happened? You was in the news and CNN News. It was talking about the COVID, talking about this. We ain't got the right mask and oh, the vaccination. and Oh, I'm not going to take the shot. And oh, I better take the shot. And all oh, this and that. And all oh, these person people killed. And all oh, they took over Washington. And all oh, they might take over the next capital. And all oh, this is going to go on. And all oh, Trump is getting out. And all oh, Biden is coming in. And all oh, blah, 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 blah. And all oh, when we get the stimulus check and all that turn off that news all it does is perpetrate worry and fear and trepidation and that's where you get into the love of this world help me preach this thing today y'all want to send a shout out to the brick houses god bless you hallelujah we honor the lord today praise god jesus says right here in matthew chapter 6 that's where we're at matthew chapter 6 Verse 25 through 34. So now let me go to our second verse here. Come on, y'all. Help me here. Excuse me. Let's go to our second verse. The second verse we have is Isaiah. Isaiah. Keep your finger in Matthew chapter 6 because we got to go back there because I want to wrap it up. Hallelujah. Isaiah. Go to Isaiah for me. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. Praise God. Listen to what it says. It says, seek ye the Lord. There we go again. You see, the word of God, you, listen, you can't just take one scripture and run away with it. The word of God will testify of itself. The word of God will, 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 will support itself. Praise God. And so Isaiah, who was written 600, 700 years before Matthew, says almost the same thing. This prophet Praise God says almost the same thing that Christ says later on. He says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Now, the point I'm trying to get you to, because the, my, my message today is don't get caught up in the web. Don't get caught in the web. Don't get caught in the web. Like a fly flying around and there's a web out there, a spider's web. He, the, the, the spider makes that web not only as its home, but it also makes its web as a trap to catch its prey in. Some of you listen to me today, praise God, I'm not, are you saying I'm a fly? No, baby, I ain't saying you a fly, praise God, but I'm just trying to use the analogy, praise God, hallelujah. We, because of the things that are out here in the world, because of the love of the world, because of the things that are being perpetrated on the news and on the radio and, and people talking in the office and people talking in the cubicle and people in the grocery store and people, praise God, at the mall and people, praise God, even in your family calling you, praise God, the Bible lets us know we can get caught up in the web. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Now notice what it says in verse 7. This is where I'm trying to get you to. Let the wicked forsake his way. That word forsake in the Hebrew, it means to abandon. It means to give up. It means to desert. It means to lay aside, to reject. It means to cast aside. It means to leave without intending to return. Ah! Preach David Brian Gray. Uh, so notice the text here. It says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man. Remember, we just talked about righteousness. Righteousness is what God is trying to get us to. And the only way we can get to that is through Jesus Christ. Righteousness. So righteousness is not just, it, 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 it's not just for today. It's for every day. Righteous. How would you and I be righteous in God's eyes? We would be righteous in God's eyes when we talk the same talk that God talks. We would be righteous in God's eyes when we look at everything that's going on like God looks at it. Come on, y'all. Why did was God pleased with his son? He was pleased with his son because he said, listen here, I only do the things that I see my father do. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. When the, when the, uh, uh, when the uh, Roman soldiers went to, to arrest Jesus, they, he, they came back empty handed. They said, well, how come you didn't bring him back? They said, listen, never a man spake like this man. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus didn't talk like they talked down on the earth. He talked heavenly talk. 
He looked at things from a different perspective. When the disciples said, Jesus, oh, oh, the water's coming in the boat. Oh, it's coming in the boat. What are we going to do? Wake up, Jesus. Wait, Jesus, don't you care if we perish? The Bible says he woke up. He rebuked the winds and the waves. He said, peace be still. And then he turned to them. Oh, ye, come on, y'all, of little faith. Hallelujah. So you and I would be in right standing with God. When we look at things the way God looks at them. And the only way you can do that is through the word of God. You got to put on his glasses. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. You see these? I got glasses here. You got to put on God's glasses. God's glasses are the word of the living God. You're going to have to start putting on these glasses. Praise God. Some of you listen to me today. You're looking at them through your natural glasses. You're looking at them through the world's glasses. The devil gave you them glasses. Take them glasses off, baby. Oh, but they're Ray-Ban. I don't care what they are. I don't care if they are Bosch and Long. Take them things off and put on the goggles, the word of God that God will give you. So notice what he says in the text. Verse 7, Isaiah chapter 55. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. Now, remember what we said, what for, the word forsake means in the Hebrew. It means to leave without intending to return. Listen, you can watch the news, but stop getting caught up in that mess. Stop talking that. See, the reason why we get caught up is because we start talking. Oh, they said the economy is bad. Oh, they said people are losing their jobs. Oh, they said the stim they don't know if the stimulus check coming. They don't know if it's not coming. They don't know. Listen, the doctor said this. The doctor said, yeah, listen here, from my charts, listen here. This seems like you only got four days to live. Listen here, I look, down, look doctor, my Bible says I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. God is in charge of the world I live in. Y'all going to have to start talking. Praise God. You can't just walk around with, I got it in my head. No, baby, it needs to confess. You need to confess it out of your mouth. Confession. Confession. You can't go up to the hospital and tap a person, a man, a woman on the shoulder who has a title on there that says doctor. And you can't get them to tell you that they're not a doctor. They're going to tell you that. Listen, be in the mall and somebody pass out or somebody fall over and somebody butts through the crowd. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. What do they say? I'm a doctor. Ha, he has professed that. He has confessed and, and, and the works work it out as in the natural, also in the spiritual. You need to profess I'm going to make it. You need to profess that God is on my side. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. Praise God. You need to confess it out of your mouth. So the Bible says to forsake his thoughts, his thoughts, his thoughts. You see, the devil, the way the devil gets us is by he getting in. You, you, uh, uh, the way the enemy gets in. He gets in, praise God, by your thoughts. The battlefield is in your thoughts. You see, when you come to know Jesus as your personal Lord and your Savior, your spirit man comes alive. Your spirit man, you are reborn. Come on, y'all. But your soul, that's why we say you are saved because your spirit is born again. And your soul, you're being saved and then when you when you uh, when you go to heaven, you get a glorified body in the resurrection. You will be saved. Come on, y'all. You see, you are a trichotomy. You are a spirit. You have a soul and it lives in a body. And so now your battle, praise God, is through is in is in the thoughts in your mind and in your flesh. Praise God. But the way you battle against the enemy is you got to get the spirit man strong. Hallelujah. How do you get the spirit man strong? The same way you get the outer man strong. You have to lift weights. You got to eat right. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Well, as in the natural, come on, y'all. Also in the spiritual. Some of you listen to me today. You ain't spending enough time in the word of God. Turn that television off. I know that the NFL news and oh, I got to check because they say the lottery is up to about seven. I think it's like eight hundred and fifty million dollars. Ah! If I could win that, baby, you win that. 
Hallelujah. You say, oh, if I win $850 million, oh, I'll be on easy. Listen here. Listen here. It's going to mess you up. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. What, hallelujah. Do you know how many people have won the lottery and ended up broke afterwards? Praise God. People will be calling you that you never heard from in your life. But all of a sudden, hey, this is your aunt. This is your uncle Toby. Yeah, I live down in Texas and I heard. Yeah. And, you know, I was thinking of a business uh, a business deal and I wanted to know if you would loan me. I, I don't need a whole lot of money, maybe about twenty five million, maybe about a million. You know, no, 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 no. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. We need hallelujah to think like Christ thinks. So what the enemy does is because you must understand there are three phases of Christianity. The salvation, growth, and change. Salvation, growth, and change. And what the devil does is, if he can't keep you from being saved, then he'll try to infiltrate between salvation and growth, or between growth and change. Why? To stunt, come on, your growth. Some of you listen to me today because the enemy knows he can't take over your spirit. He can't do it no more because you're born again. So what he does is try to affect your mind. What he does is try to affect your body, make you sick or make you get in all kinds. Or he tries to affect you by the talk. You see, the devil comes to steal. Come on, y'all, to kill. Come on, y'all, and to destroy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. According to studylight.org, language studies, Greek thought, Worry has to do with care. It has to do with anxiety. It has to do with worry. Worry has to do with anxiety and restlessness. Disquieted in your soul. You lay down, but you can't just you can't go to sleep. You 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 walk the floor and twisting your hands and your eyes and wrinkles all coming up in your face. Praise God. Hallelujah. Perplexed like never before. You done bought a brand new car, but how I'm going to pay for it? I don't know how I'm going to pay for it. I got a, I had an apartment. I was fine in an apartment, but I thought I, I looked out and I saw the Joneses and they got a new house. It's, it's three bedrooms and living room and a fixed up basement. So I went on out and bought me a house. Now nah, I'm on, I don't know how to pay for it. I just lost my job. You're perplexed like never before. Hallelujah. The enemy comes to bring division and separation. You see, the way you can tell if something is of God or if something is of the devil, you see, God adds and multiplies. But the devil, come on, y'all, he divides and he subtracts. <laughs> Hallelujah. What are the phases of Christian life? Salvation, growth, and change. 1 Peter chapter 5, and we'll close here. Jesus says, don't get caught in the web. Don't get caught. Don't get caught. Look at your neighbor. I don't know if you got somebody in that room with you or where you at, praise God. But look at your neighbor and tell a neighbor, don't get caught in the web. Don't get caught in the web. Go with me to 1 Peter. Hallelujah. I'm going to just read this a little bit. I want to show you how the devil sneaks in. 1 Peter. Now, this is another disciple of Christ. Come on, y'all. Look at what he says in verse chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. Look at what he says. He says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in when? Due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. That word casting, it's like if you've ever been fishing. I don't know if you go fishing, but uh, praise God, when you, you got that worm, you put it on the hook or whatever that, that bait is that you use, and you, all right, you threw it way out there. Why? Because the fish are way out in the deep. Come on, y'all. The fish ain't up by the shallow, by the, by, by, by the, by the rocks and by the sand. They are, they're way out there in the deep. That's what you need to do with your, care, your, your cares. Praise God. Cast them way out there in the casting all your care upon him. So what would you do in prayer? You would go like this. This is what I would do. And this is what I have done. I write down my situation. Lord, I'm thinking about. All right. Uh, taking care of my daughter. All right. Uh, my my job. Um, where I'm going to be in 10 years. Um, a new house or what, whatever. I'm writing it down. And then when I go to God in prayer, first of all, I worship the Lord. 
Don't just come up to God. Just, God, I need you to do this and do that and do this and do like he's Santa. He ain't. No, he ain't Santa Claus, y'all. Praise God. Worship the Lord. Jesus said uh, he's looking for true worshipers. Worship the Lord. Magnify him and glorify him. Praise God. And then after you worship the Lord and glorify him, then confess your sin. Lord, I've been worrying and I've been worrying about these things that I'm getting ready to give over to you. And I'm going to turn my back on them and not uh, not uh, relate to them again. Lord, forgive me. I've been talking about other people and name who that is. Praise God. Hallelujah. I, I, Lord, I've been doing this. Lord, I've been doing that. Lord, I got caught up in, in, in greed. Lord, I got caught up in that. Tell the Lord. Be honest with God. He sees everything. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. So listen, let God know. Be honest with the Lord. Lord, I ain't going to lie to you. That person on my job makes me, I want to put my fist right upside their head. Be honest with God. Don't sit up lying, Lord, I've been loving you and I've been loving people and I've been, no, be honest with God. Lord, my children get on my last nerve, but be honest with the Lord. And children do get, <laughs> but anyway, uh, praise, praise God. So, so we're talking about casting our care upon God. So once I write these things down and I worship the Lord and glorify him, then I confess my sins. Lord, I've sinned. Lord, I messed up. Lord, I ain't read the word today. Lord, I haven't done my devotions in a whole week. Forgive me. I'm sorry. Lord, I know you told me to tithe. Lord, and I know I'm going to uh, I'm going to experience it, but God forgive me for not tithing. God forgive me for not doing this or doing that. Whatever. Tell, be honest with God. Lord, I had some wicked thoughts. I had some fornicating thoughts. I had some thoughts of adultery. Be honest with God, whatever it is. Then once you do that, Lord, wash me in the blood. Wash me in the blood. Then, Lord, here are my Things that I'm going through with this and that and that and this and my children and my, my, my new I need a new job or Lord, I need the finances or Lord, this is what the doctor said about that. Be honest, read it to him and then take it, fold it up or crinkle it up and don't go back to it no more. That's what uh, he was talking about when he said forsake his thoughts, forsake his thoughts. Don't get caught up in what the world is saying. The news, I say, I keep telling you, if you can't handle the news, turn it off. Praise God. And that's probably anybody. After a while, the news is just recycled garbage. It's just trash. Praise God. Hallelujah. Turn that mess off. You don't need to keep turning that junk on. Praise God. Put on some gospel music. Put on some, so you go to YouTube and put the scriptures on there. Hallelujah. And let it flow through your house or flow through your car or flow on your phone. You can't sleep at night. Put the earplugs in your ear and just lay the phone down. Praise God. And let it just speak to you. Get the Bible app on your phone. Get all these. Uh, you got all them games on your phone and all this other kind of stuff on your phone and, 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 and stop pics on your phone and praise God. Get the Bible on your phone. Praise God. Hallelujah. So notice what he says. I'm, I'm going to wrap up. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him. Why? For he cares for you. Be sober. Listen, listen. Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, what? Walketh about, what? Seeking whom he may devour. So the devil is like you've seen the, 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 the animal uh, shows on television. As that animal is sneaking down and the grass is up there and he's waiting. What is he waiting for? He's waiting for one of them uh, antelopes or whatever else he's going after. Zebras or whatever he's going after. Even an elephant, baby elephant, getting away from the crowd. Getting away, and that's how the devil does. He gets you away from the crowd. Hallelujah. That's why you need to keep turning on gospel music and, and listen to preaching and getting into the word of God because he'll, he'll, otherwise he'll try to separate you, bring in the news, bring in this, bring in uh, whatever's going on in Washington, whatever's going on in your job, whatever's going on in your family, he'll, to separate you. Whom resists steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. 
but the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, he have suffered a while, make you perfect, stable, strength, and settle you. Can I tell you something? Jesus came on this earth. He was, he was 30 years old. He lived, he lived for 33. He was on the earth. He started his ministry at 33 years old. He knowing that he would have to go to the cross. He knowing that people would betray him. Him knowing that people would laugh at him and blaspheme him. And of course, the worst part, when he was on the cross, his disciples walking away. Him knowing that, still and all, he kept his mind on the kingdom of God. He kept his mind on serving God. That's why the Bible says, uh, praise God. It says, let us lay aside every weight and thus sin, which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus. Why? The author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him. He didn't look at that. Listen. Can I tell you something? When they're boxing. When they're playing football. When they're playing basketball. Whatever they're doing. These Olympic champions or, or NFL or pro football. They don't look at. Listen here. I got to get in the gym. and what? No. They're looking at being holding up that trophy. One day. I'm going to hold up that trophy. I'm going to hold up that trophy. I don't care what I'm. I, I, I saw that. Uh, I see that many times. But I remember when Tiger Woods won his last Masters. His back was hurting or his knee was hurting. And every time he went to hit the, hit the, uh, uh, you know, hit the ball, it, it grimaced him in power. Grimaced, he, you know, got in pain. He grimaced in pain, whatever else. Why? He was willing to go through with it because I'm a champion. I want to hold up that trophy. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus looked past the cross. He looked past the suffering. He looked past the blasphemy. He looked past people laughing at him. Come on, y'all. He looked past all that. Hallelujah. For the joy that was set before him. The joy, the joy. What's the joy? The joy is not just being in heaven with the Father, but you and I coming to know Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we get into heaven as well. That's the joy for Christ. He died for you and I. He rose for you and I. Don't get caught up in the web. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I got so much more, but I, I, I got to close this thing today because I promised you that we were going to have communion today. Hallelujah. If you don't have the bread, if you don't have the wine, that's all right. You shouldn't have wine anyway. You should have grape juice. But anyway, if you got that, we're going to go right on in to communion. Praise God. Right on in to communion. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Don't get caught up in the web. Praise the living God. And then I'm going to pray with you. I want to pray with you. Praise God. Hear these words. Please hear these words. For I have received of the Lord that which also delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. So let him give that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home. That ye come not together into condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. 
Notice what he says in verse 32. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. How would we be condemned with the world? Because we got caught up in the thoughts of the world and what the world is doing and what the world is saying. God don't want you and I caught up in that mess. 